Okay, y'all, I have two hours this time. I actually have a little decent amount of time to go into the biggest Goodwill here in Portland and hopefully find a ton of things. That is my hope, that is my goal for today. So I am going to bring you in with me and I'm gonna show you everything that I find. I'm also gonna tell you how much I project everything to sell for and how much I project to make from everything. And then at the end of the video, I'll share the totals, what I expect to make from this entire haul. So I'm really, really excited. I actually wanna go through some men's things today as well since I have a little extra time. So we'll see if I make it over to those sections, but it's a little after 10, they just opened. So let's head on inside and hopefully find some amazing stuff to sell online for a profit. But before we head inside, I'm very excited about the sponsor of today's video. And that sponsor is Green Chef. Health and nutrition have been top of mind for me lately, so I'm so excited to be sharing about Green Chef today. For those of y'all who don't know, Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit company with options for every lifestyle, including keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. I am transitioning from vegetarian back to vegan, so I get the vegan boxes, which are amazing. I made these Baja California bowls that my family was raving about, even the ones who aren't vegan. And it's really not surprising that Green Chef is the number one best meal kit for eating well. Green Chef's pre-made and pre-measured sauces, dressings, and spices get you more chef-curated flavor in less time. Plus, with Green Chef, you're reducing your food waste by up to 23% when compared to grocery shopping. For a limited time, Green Chef will plant one tree for every box sold with the organization One Tree Planted in honor of Earth Month. How cool is that? Plus, you can use my code MOGIBETH60 to get 60% off plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Make more time for your reselling goals and beyond with convenient, wholesome meals from Green Chef. Okay, well, thank you so much again to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. Let's go thrifting. Fingers crossed, as always. All right, well, of course, as soon as I got into Goodwill, I went straight for the new racks. If you're new to reselling, this is where all the good stuff is because this is the stuff that most people haven't gone through yet. It has just been rolled out from the Goodwill employees and they're putting them away. And depending on where you live, sometimes Goodwill employees will get irritated with you if you go through these racks. But in Portland, they generally our understanding so i always 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 go through them first thing and luckily when i got here there were several new racks out i didn't find a ton of stuff on these as you saw there was some j crew some anthropology but the styles were either not good enough for me to pick up or the condition was too poor or the style was just too old, such as this Akimi and Ken Henley from Anthropology. That's an in-house anthropology brand. There was a day, you know, three or four years ago where I would have been so excited to have found that. But nowadays I will definitely not pay up for pieces like that and I will skip them in regular Goodwills and I might even skip them at the Goodwill bins just because there is just not a lot of demand for those items on the reseller marketplace and they are very saturated. 
At this point, I had gone through a couple of new racks without finding anything, which was a little discouraging. I saw these frame jeans for $7.99, but it was Le Skinny de Gian, which I did not pick up. I don't typically pick up that style, but this was my first find of the day. I've been having good luck finding Levi's 501 jeans, and I have good luck selling them too. So these are in the colorway Small Blessings. They cost $9.99. Based off of recent experience and checking comps, I think these will sell for 45 which will give me a projected profit of about 26 bucks which is great very excited to find these and i'm really excited to get them listed right behind those levi's were a pair of everlane jeans however i have had a recent experience selling that wash of everlane jeans and I decided to pass on them for $12.99. Typically, I'm finding that Everlane sells for about, I don't know, $28, $30, especially in that wash. So I decided to pass on those. However, I do love selling Everlane and I will pick up Everlane if it's the right piece. I thought about picking these up too. They were $12.99 and actually did like the wash of these but they had some staining on the front, so I decided to go ahead and pass. They had what seemed like to be a new rack of jackets and blazers out. This was a Pendleton blazer I kind of paused on, wondering if I should check comms on. I have very little experience selling Pendleton, even though I come across it all the time here in Portland, but I decided to just go ahead and pass. Similarly, that Levi's jean jacket was interesting to me, but it cost $14.99, so I decided to go ahead and pass. This was an old Bowden coat, but I passed on that too, just because the style was a little outdated, and I tend to only really pick up the newer Bowden tag. They also had this rack of kids clothing, which I decided to go through because I'm starting to find a little bit more luck picking up and selling kids clothing, especially now that I do have a child. This was interesting to me. I considered picking this up. It was a pair of new attack REI pants for $12.99, kids. Um, but I did pass. I did put this Patagonia jacket in my cart. I believe it was $14.99, but after checking it over, once I got to checkout, I saw multiple flaws, so I decided to put it back. However, when I've done research in the past, I found that Patagonia kids jackets can do well. I actually recently bought Billy Lou a Patagonia kids jacket, but I, kids is something that I tend not to want to pay up for. And so even $14.99 is a little steep for a children's piece, even if it's Patagonia. So I did not pick up any kids items to sell in this trip. This was a cute new attack love stitch dress, but $12.99 I decided to pass. This was an older style J. Crew dress. I decided to pass on that, especially since it was a size zero. There are certain J. Crew pieces, even if they are a little older, that I will pick up. And actually, you'll see that later on in the haul. But almost always with J. Crew, I try my best to check comps because even newer pieces can uh, not sell for a ton of money. So J. Crew actually can be quite lucrative with the right piece, but just always, always, always check comps. And it's easy to do that because you could just look in the materials tag. There's a style number. You're just going to Google J. Crew and the style number, and you'll be able to find that style and check comps pretty easily. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say check comps, I will put um, my video on checking comps on the screen. Okay, so this is actually a really expensive brand. I've sold it before for really good money, Samso Samso, but this is a really good example of it's not just the brand that you have to pay attention to because that style was definitely not gonna be worth picking up. It was a pair of leopard print jeans, which is just not in style these days. Okay, that was a cute pair of Madewell jeans. I would have picked those up, but it was priced $19.99, so I was forced to have to pass on. This was a great brand and a really exciting find, a pair of Cezanne jeans. Cezanne is maybe my favorite brand to find right now, but unfortunately that flaw there, I don't even know if it comes across very badly here, but it was pretty bad flaw that forced me to have to put it back, which was really sad. I really wanted to put those in my cart. Um, and when it comes to Cezanne, I will say the denim is probably the worst performing category within that brand, but 
it's still a good thing to find and I would have definitely picked those up if they were in good condition. But unfortunately, you just have to consider things other than the brand when you're sourcing. You have to consider style and you have to consider condition. So this was a cute pair of J. Crew jeans. I thought about picking up for $7.99, but since the distressing was kind of blown out on the knee, I decided to go ahead and pass. If those threads within the distressing were still there, maybe I would have considered picking it up. Okay, this is a brand I still love finding and it is Spanx. And this is a size small petite heat and I paid $9.99 for these. I did pick them up. They are called the Perfect Pant. They have a back seam. Again, paid $9.99. I believe they will sell for $45 based off of comps, which again would give me a projected profit of $26, bucks, which is great. Another really, really great find. I was so excited to find those because they will be easy to list, especially since those were in excellent condition. Next, I found another pair of Madewell jeans. These were actually a pretty good style. They are called the Curvy Road Tripper Jean in a size 28, which is a great size for Madewell, but they were missing the materials tag and they had several flaws, so I did decide to go ahead and pass on these, but if they were in excellent condition, then I would have picked them up. I really like selling Madewell jeans, especially recent styles, and certain styles do better than others. And here is one I did choose to pick up. This is Madewell. Whenever it has that kind of eco tag, I know it's probably a good one. This is the perfect vintage jean, which is a style I really, really like picking up. I actually decided I'm gonna keep this pair of jeans, but for the purposes of this video, I looked up comps. So I paid $14.99. I actually think they would sell for 50 bucks. So that would give me a projected profit of about $25 which is great. This is exactly the type of style that I am looking for when it comes to Madewell. Okay, I also found a pair of rag and bone Simona pants, which was a really good find. These are in excellent condition. I own a pair of these pants in my size. I paid $9.99 and I projected they would sell for $40, which would give me a projected profit of $22. They're gonna be really easy to list. Again, they were in excellent condition. And so I was really excited to find those. I left the jeans and pants section and headed for my favorite section in Goodwill and that is the maxi dresses section and I found a few gems in this section but I had to go through of course a lot of duds so things like fashion nova etc but this was my first find in this section a really good one it's lulu's infinite glory dress size extra large which is great cost of goods 9.99 i think this will sell for about 40 bucks it could be more but that would give me a projected profit of 22 which is awesome and it's an excellent condition as you know if you watch these videos i love finding formal wear. This is right up my alley. And Lulu's, even though it's not the brand that sells for the most, it has an excellent sell-through rate. So I really love finding Lulu's formal wear, which is just, you know, maxi gowns and so forth. I'll typically skip on other Lulu's items within Goodwill, but the gowns I will almost always pick up as long as they're in excellent condition. So I kept going through this section of the thrift store and my second find was actually half off, which was lucky. And it was from a brand that I've actually featured in a bread and butter brand video before and it is Aster the Label. Some pieces by Aster the Label will just sell really, really well. So I decided to go ahead and take a chance on this one. It cost half off $9.99, so my cost of goods was $4.99, which is great. And after checking comps, I think it will sell for about 30 bucks, which would give me a projected profit of 19. So that's really not too shabby. I did check comps in the store and decided to just go ahead and try out that piece, but there are definitely Aster the label pieces that can sell for more. And there are definitely Aster the label pieces that won't sell at all. So it's just, a brand that you've got to check comps on. This was a gorgeous Madewell dress, but they wanted $19.99 for it, which is too bad, but it is the exact type of Madewell dress that I would be willing to pick up if it was priced appropriately. There are so many Madewell dresses though that I will pass on. It is a category within that brand that you have to be pretty particular with and selective on. And if you know, you're doubting yourself, definitely check comps. 
here I am actually finding another Lulu's dress and I was really excited to find this one too because it was in a really cute style and it was a size large priced at only $7.99 which is great but as with all formal wear pieces you really need to check the hem first and foremost and this had a ton of snags all over the hem and so I decided to actually go ahead and pass it's really easy to snag that chiffon fabric so I did pass on on this piece but if it was in excellent condition I definitely would have picked it up this is a formal wear piece that I'm really excited that I picked up this is the brand Betsy and Adam which I didn't know about until I did liquidation this was for sale for $13 it is this gorgeous black ruched ruffle gown and I got it of course for $13 I believe the projected sales price based off of comps is 65, which would give me a projected profit of 39. I actually think this piece would sell for more, but there was a small flaw on the back of this dress, which I will show you here in a second. It has like a really small snag right next to the zipper, which is actually something that made me think maybe I shouldn't pick this up, but because it's in really excellent condition otherwise, it's a great style, I did decide to go ahead and put it in my cart. And I will do that from time to time with flawed items if the flaw is small enough and the piece is substantial enough. And I'll just disclose the flaw. I used to be really, really afraid of picking up anything with any minor flaw back when I first started reselling, but now I have realized through selling thousands of flawed items that items with flaws will sell. Um, it just, you just have to disclose it and you just have to price it accordingly. And if there's enough demand for that item, it will sell. So then I headed over to the regular dress section. The dress section in this particular Goodwill is massive. I almost never go through the whole thing, but I did go through about two thirds of it in this trip. Here I'm finding a Madewell dress, which I was mentioning earlier, I am very selective with. This was $7.99, which is a good price, but it was from fall of 2017. And so just based off that alone, I went ahead and passed. Here is a Club Monaco dress that I considered picking up for a second. Club Monaco is a brand that can sell well sometimes, but it was missing the lining. So I went ahead and put that back as well. BCBG Generation is a brand that I will actually pick up at the bins. It does pretty well sometimes, but I decided to pass. Here is a Lulu's mini cocktail dress for $9.99 that I did pass on. I'm definitely not going to pay up that much for a cocktail dress by Lulu's. However, again, if I saw that at the bins, I would most likely pick it up. And it, since it does have such a good sell-through rate, I probably would be able to sell it for, you know, 20 to $30. But I did have some luck in the dresses section this time around. My first find was this anthropology snake print dress it was $6.99 which is great and it is called the Rachel dress my cost of goods was $6.99 like I said and after checking comps I think it will sell for $30 which will give me a projected profit of about $17 whenever I see that buy anthropology tag I'm really drawn to want to pick it up because for me it does pretty well I just sold a buy anthropology dress on eBay for $75 so I'm excited to see how this one does I haven't sold or picked up City Chic in a little bit of time, so I was excited to find this new with tag wrap dress that I decided to go ahead and pick up. It cost $14.99, which is pretty high, and uh, my projected sales price is $38, so that's a pretty slim profit margin with a projected profit of $15.41, but in my experience, plus size City Chic sells really quickly, so hopefully that will be the case with this dress. Here I am finding a really good bolo brand, Amanda Uprichard, but this was definitely an outdated piece and so I passed on it, which again goes to my point earlier that it's really not just about brand, but you also have to take style into consideration, but that is a really good brand to be on the lookout for. 
but because it's a brand that's been around for a while it's one that you have to really think about style okay so this is actually a dress i have sold before it is ronna gill sold to anthropology this dress used to be worth a whole lot more than it is now but it's still worth picking up my cost of goods is 7.99 i project it to sell for 35 dollars which would give me a projected profit of 20 that's good. I'm really happy with that. Uh, this is a dress that probably could have sold for more like 50, 60 a few years ago, but that doesn't mean it's not worth picking up. It's still really cute. Okay, and this is a new with tag Sundance top. I really like picking up Sundance. My cost of goods on this was $9.99. I project it to also sell for $35, which would give me a projected profit of $18. I love thrifting new with tag items because obviously new with tag increases the resale value. Okay, so another piece I found was this Bardot dress. I have sold this dress before because of liquidation and therefore I know how well it does. It is the Gemma dress in Lily Green. My cost of goods is $9.99. I project it to sell for $45 and that would give me a projected profit of $26. If you see a Bardo dress with this kind of lace on it, I would say definitely check comps. It typically does pretty well. Okay, so earlier in the video, I talked about how I was gonna pick up a J. Crew dress, and this is the dress I was talking about. It is a tweed sheath dress. I checked comps and decided to pick it up. It cost $14.99. I projected to sell for about 40 bucks, which would give me a projected profit of 17. It is a really good size and what I really like selling by J. Crew is more career style pieces and I felt like that really fit the bill with that. So I'm excited to see how that piece does. Uh, if it doesn't receive a ton of interest, uh, you know, right after a listing, then I'll consider taking a little bit lower for it and just, you know, take that as a learning lesson. Here I'm finding a Patagonia dress Patagonia is a brand I will pick up every time I find it at the bins, but for dresses like that, especially a little bit older dresses, I'm not going to pay $9.99 for. That's one category within Patagonia that I'm very selective with because I've been burned on it before. Okay, if you watch my Bolo video on maternity brands, I'm almost 100% certain that I covered this brand. Actually, I am certain. So make sure, I'll link it up on the screen if you haven't watched it, but this was a really good find. New with tag jeans, half off, so my cost of goods was $4.99. I project them to sell for 40, which would give me a projected profit of 27. And I didn't find only one pair, but I found two pairs. They're different styles, but they're both new with tag. So I'm just really excited. They're both half off for $4.99. I also project this one to sell for $40, which would give me a projected profit of $27 as well. Really, really, really excited about this find. I am so curious to see how quickly this sells, but I love finding and selling maternity brands. Okay, these were so cute, I had to pick them up. They are the Cotton Twill Short by Everlane, one in the color Rosewood and one in the color Black. They are both size double zero. I combined the stats of these two, so they were each $6.99, so my cost of goods was $13.98, and I think they're gonna both sell for $25, so a projected sales of $50, which would give me a projected profit of $26.02 for both. If we weren't heading into spring, summer, I probably wouldn't have picked those up, but because I think they should sell quickly, I did decide to grab Grab them. Speaking of something I shouldn't have picked up, this is the one piece from today's Thrift With Me that I wish I did not pick up. It was a pair of J. Crew pants. They're women's pants. I paid $7.99 for them. And after getting home and checking comps, they're probably gonna sell for $20 if I'm lucky, which would give me a projected profit of $8. The last 20 minutes I had in the thrift store, I decided to go through the men's section, and that's actually where I found those J. Crew pants. And they were really recent season, like I think it was spring 2021 or something like that. So I decided just to go ahead and get them real quickly without checking comps, which I do regret. I wish I would have checked comps, but I would not have picked them up but um, it's fine. I'll go ahead and list them and I don't think I will lose uh, money on those. I put that in my cart to check 
and see if it was worth anything. It was not, so I put them back. That's what I do a lot of the times when I'm in the men's section or when I find men's items at the bins because I'm not as familiar with men's brands as I am with women's brands. So I'm just constantly on my phone searching. Earlier, I found those Indochino pants, which I am familiar with that brand, but do not pick up because though that's actually a custom uh, tailoring company, which is cool, but it just doesn't resell that well. Bonobos, which you saw me find earlier, uh, I don't pay up for typically with pants like that, so I did leave those behind, but I was really excited to actually find these Athleta Brooklyn pants. I love finding Athleta. These cost $7.99, and I project them to sell for about $38, which would give me a projected profit of $22.41, which is great. Black pants by Athleta, I find, do the best. And so when I find that kind of style, I usually pick them up. This was a really exciting find. It was a pair of North Face ski pants. They cost $12.99, and I actually project them to sell for about $60, bucks, which would give me a projected profit of $35. I've talked about this before on a bread and butter brand video, one of them that I've done, but ski suits, ski pants, ski bibs by North Face just do really well. So if I find them in good or excellent condition, I usually like to pick them up. I also picked up these J. Crew jeans, which I'm excited to get listed. They're a good size. They cost $7.99 and they have a really cute distressing detail on the knee. They're demi boot cut. So yeah, I paid $7.99 for them. I project them to sell for about $30, bucks, which would give me a projected profit of $16, which is not too bad. And typically, this kind of style sells pretty quickly for me. So I was willing to pick that up for that price. And then I found a pair of men's Madewell jeans, which I'm excited to sell. They were in excellent condition, size 34-30. And I did pay up for them. I paid $14.99 for my cost of goods and after checking comps I project them to sell for about $40 which would give me a projected profit of 17 which is not too bad they were from a recent season in excellent condition and I just don't have a ton of experience selling made well men's so I wanted to pick them up and experiment I also found these in the men's shoe section. They're Roan by Bed Stew style Mac 2. They cost $15. I project them to sell for $50, which would give me a projected profit of $25. And these were in like new condition, so I'm really excited to get them listed. But that was actually my last find in this thrift with me. So that brings me to the totals of this video. My total cost of goods was $228.81, and I project everything to sell for $906, which would give me a projected profit of $496, which is not bad from one trip. Yay, that was a really successful trip with me. I've got a lot of good stuff. Spent $228.79, which is crazy. So, so excited to get this stuff listed. A lot of really, really good stuff. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite thing was. I think those two new attack seraphine jeans for half off was such a good find and i am really excited to get those dresses listed i'm all about dresses these days so i'm glad that i found a few really cute ones all right well if you like this video be sure to give it a big old thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel put out two new videos every week monday and thursday and yeah i will see y'all in the next one okay love y'all bye